we have a slide of a discourse, actually, because for those that, some of you know, but for those that don't, I'm going to be talking about beavers today for a while. Yeah. Um, so I had this intrusive thought um, that in a parallel universe, there is a beaver that's giving a talk about me. Um, and he would say something along the lines of, this is Nev. Um, she's a two times founder. She's been in tech recruitment industry for 10 years now. Um, she has helped over 200 women learn how to code, and she's currently building a referral-based recruitment platform called Recruit, where you can actually earn money by referring others for jobs. And this is why I want to talk about beavers. You know how they build those dams and live in little ponds? It actually wasn't always like that. Somewhere along the lines, they figured out they can swim. They didn't know they could swim. So they were like, yo, let's build a dam, live in the pond, and protect that way ourselves from the predators, you know? And the problem is they still do, st they still do that. They live their best life in those ponds. The thing with beavers is that they're not evolving. And beavers are one of three species in the world that have stopped evolving. They're showing no signs of evolution. Can you guess one of the second species in the world that's, that's showing no signs of evolution? Anyone? Humans, exactly. Yeah. But even if you look around this room, you're going to see some brilliant examples, right? Some of us can run really fast. Some of us are really good at math, you know? Some of us are unfortunately giving talks about beavers or saying stupid things on social media, you know? So as a species, we're not really evolving. And if you think about, like, how do we even evolve, you know? What's our main desire, what it is that we want to be better at. The number one compliment anyone can get is, you're smart. We all want to be smarter, right? At least I do, you know. So being a founder, I do a lot of crazy stuff. I almost said the bad word. Um, and. Um, it includes, I don't know, marketing, it includes sales, giving talks, you know. And on top of that, I have to do this one task that I absolutely hate. And I never said this out loud, uh, but I hate customer support. I know, as a founder, like, I should really love it and embrace it. But I never learned to write those candid emails, you know, when you reach out to support and there's this Anna or John, that sounds like not only they will tag your issue, you know, they're gonna fix your whole life. I don't know how to do that, you know? And then ChatGPT came in and I was stoked, like someone can finally do this for me and it's a machine, you know? But what actually happened is that as I was outsourcing my thinking, you know, I gave it to a machine, I didn't have to think through it, my customer support emails improved immensely, but at the same time, I figured somewhere along that happening that like, man, you know, I'm not really learning anything from this. So I stopped and I tried by what I've learned from ChatGPT and the way ChatGPT wrote the emails, I can now do the same, you know? And there are two sides to this story, you know? There's a way where you can look at AI as a tool that can help you improve, that can help us improve our lives, whatever the, it is that we're doing, you know? And then there's this dark statistic that everyone's mentioning that half of those that are working on developing AI systems said that there's at least 10% 10 chance that AI is gonna lead to human extension. And that's kind of dark, right? I don't even wanna think about it, you know? So San Francisco, being the Athens of today's modern world, came up with this amazing key phrase, and I love it. It's cautious optimism, which means that we stand for cautiously developing 
AI systems believing while believing it's going to improve our lives. So I think that embedding AI into any HR process or anything we do related to humans working real jobs, real humans, real jobs, we really need um, uh, we really need to think about how to, I lost my train of thought here. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, when uh, thinking about how to embed HR, um, AI into HR processes, I believe this is the best approach we can have. We have to be really cautious about what we're doing, but at the same time, we should be optimistic about this techno technology, you know? There's like, I used to be an HR, I used to be a headhunter, I used to be a recruiter. There are a lot of things that you like really don't like about those jobs, you know. But at the same time, there are things that could be immensely improved, right? And here's why I believe we should be cautious. I was hired by a big tech company back in, this was 2017. And let me tell you, AI in HR is nothing new. We've seen it, we've tried it, we've used it, but it's improving, it's getting better, and we hope to see it, you know, like, get better each by each day, you know? But the year is 2017, I think, and I was um, hired by this, by this big tech company to help them uh, with sourcing, pretty much. So this is a screenshot from an applicant tracking system they were using. An applicant tracking system is pr pretty much uh, software that you use to manage the whole hiring process and manage candidates that are applying. Um, so as you can see, I had no qualified candidates. The software disqualified most of my candidates and I sourced them manually. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, like I know those candidates are qualified. I did it myself, you know. And then I went out to the management and I was like, hey, uh, so the software disqualified all, my, all of my candidates. I had to manually move them back to the pipeline. Can you tell me how this works? And they told me, no, they didn't know how it works, you know. And then I reached out to support only to find out that they're training their models on the data that candidates provide. The model is not ready, but they're already selling the software as an AI HR, right? So the first thing I believe that any hiring manager, HR manager, any founder should do when picking an HR software is ask, how does this thing really work, you know? Because you are responsible for the data of the people that are applying through your software, right? That is through the software you're using. So I would say that when starting this whole process and thinking about how, how does it work, you need to consider a couple of things. You need to consider your candidates and your employees' needs and their experience, you know? You need to think about things like, are people with disability able to use this? And how do they collect the data? Like, what do they do with our data? And then how do they train the models, you know? So I believe that HR software, any HR software and recruitment software, needs to have a framework built around the company that will help them direct, manage, and monitor any AI um, activities that you have in your HR organization. And I've included some of those. But the real thing here is that we, as people, we've made a lot of mistakes, you know, um, working, hiring, and so on. So the last question when you ask the vendors and talk to your team about how to set up a framework to adopt AI into your HR process is, am I missing some form of social context here? And this is the last question to ask yourself. And I'm gonna tell you why on my example. As soon as OpenAI published their API, I jumped on it because I knew exactly what I would build with it, you know? I wanted to build a job description generator. And I'm a part of a lot of HR communities. I'm gonna move over here, okay? Um, I'm a part of a lot of HR communities. Um, 
and I had a friend, Rachel, reach out to me, and she was like, what did you do? And I was like, I built a generator, you know, isn't it great? And she was like, no, did you account for bias and stuff? You know, because like most of the uh, job descriptions on the internet are really bad. And I was like, yeah, I didn't, you know? So I had to, stay, to take a step back and really train, uh, get more data on how to build like really good job descriptions, bias-free and so on before I launched it. So it was a work, but it was worth it. Um, so really, what I'm trying to say is, if you're going to uh, embed AI into your HR processes, you need to think beyond yourself. I know some of it sounds really flashy and you want to jump into it, but start with how, how it works. Thank you. All right, we'll do a quick round of questions before our last talk. Yep, please go ahead. Hi, hello. So I have a question regarding AI in HR processing. Uh, nowadays we know that usually uh, recruiting process, it uh, takes, for example, three or four steps where you have HR interview test, tests, maybe manager interview and so on. So in your opinion, which uh, part of the process should be given to AI in the beginning where AI, it, let's say, should classify candidates or maybe in the end or in the middle? Thank you. I believe AI could be used pretty much throughout the whole process, depending on how AI is built. So if we start from the job description itself, you know, do I believe that our job description generator is the best in the world? I don't really, I'm honest here. Um, I think it will improve over time, but that's why I'm saying that I really need to remember, always remember when thinking about any, embedding any AI into HR processes, think about the word, the key phrase I mentioned, Cautious optimism, like be cautious with what you're using and be optimistic that it's going to improve over time, that you're going to be able to get way better results than you would on your own, you know? I would say that would be my answer. Cool. Thanks. One more question. There we go. Uh, over here. Uh, same row as before. Hi. Uh, besides the recruitment process in the HR systems, what other fields of HR do you see the biggest advantage of using AI? Is it a performance management, DNI processes, um, any other initiative? Thank you. Um, definitely employee experience and employee happiness. I can think. I think AI could be of great use there. And there is a Serbian startup called Ergnostic that it's doing an amazing job in that field. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nevena.